It's not easy, let me tell you. I mean, it's been a really, really tough year for us. You know, it's not a real holiday. Um, all the holidays are just milestones that remind us that Omer is not here. Um, we are still stuck on October 7th. We're on a, in a waiting pattern for over a year right now when we're praying for his life and for his safety. That's where we are. We don't have an idea. Um, we are over a year now waiting to hear about his whereabouts and his condition together with 101 other hostages. Those are seven Americans that were taken uh, over a year ago. And uh, I, we all know and believe that it's time to bring them home. It might be, uh, uh, you know, in the right direction. Uh, we welcome a ceasefire agreement. Um, we, we felt that uh, uh, there should have been a ceasefire in Gaza long ago, as the uh, Israeli military objectives have, uh, have been achieved, as we were told. Uh, and um, uh, we're disappointed that uh, the hostage deal that uh, uh, we all uh, so much want to have uh is is uh ha hasn't been part of uh of that uh, ceasefire we feel it's a missed opportunity but now after the election um the focus is back here in the united states and should continue to be uh to finish the crisis in the middle east and the hostages are the key to reduce the uh uh the tension um, and, and get into a ceasefire and, and, and hopefully into a sustainable peace in the region. We know that uh, both President Biden and President-elect Trump want the war to end, want the hostages back. So we are very, very hopeful. And that is what we are asking that they work together now at this moment and not wait until inauguration day to get it done, to bring the hostages home. You asked about our son's condition. I can only tell you that, you know, the after the execution of the six hostages in the beginning of September, there was not a lot of room left for imagination. You know, we saw how they came back home, uh, emaciated, dehydrated, half their body weight. And that was after 11 months of being held in captivity. Winter is coming, you know, that they're being held in, in tunnels underneath Gaza. Um, their resources depleted, you know, they really do not have time. They all have to come home. And we are urging both administrations to work together and put pressure on the regional players, uh, whether it's Qatar, Egypt, we're hearing now about Turkey and Israel, and just get the deal done and get them back home. We feel uh, there's something similar to uh, the Reagan moment that we had in 1981 where the exchange of uh, administration here in the United States created an opportunity. We feel that uh, President Trump and President Biden have an opportunity, both of them, to solidify their legacy and bring the, the hostages and, and, and a ceasefire to the region. Um, it, it's really hard. A second time having an empty chair it's not a real holiday until we are uh, all together. Um, Bitter said, and we are heading into the holiday season. Uh, Hanukkah next, this year is the same day of uh, Christmas. We sure hope in the next few weeks, uh, good news is going to come about and we'll be able to celebrate the holiday with our dear ones. You know, Jim, it, it's been such a roller coaster. There's been so much talk about uh, ceasefire, about hostage deals, and then they fall apart. You know, even just this morning, we, we wake up, we open our phone, 
Um, in Israel, they're talking about uh, Netanyahu asking for Biden to help in, in getting a, a partial deal done. You know, our heart is just sinking, leaping. You, you don't know how to respond. What does it mean, a partial deal? Everyone wants their loved ones home. They all need to come home. The ones who are alive need to come home for rehabilitation, and the ones who are deceased need to come home for a proper burial and for closure for their families. So whatever is needed, we every, the, all of the families are craving for the families to come home and for this nightmare to finally end for all sides and suffering.